Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Chris Braylick. I'm a partner at First Round Capital. We're an early stage uh, institutional seed investor, you might call us, uh, in, with offices in Philadelphia, where I'm based, in San Francisco. And we just announced we're opening up in New York. And uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. I, I, I love uh, Canada, and I love the, the companies that I meet with when we're here. We had a, a, a something we do, we've done about 10 times before called office hours. And we did one this morning, and we announced that we're coming to a city, and we set up shop in a coffee shop, and we invite entrepreneurs to sign up and come and, and pitch us and have 10-minute short meetings. And we had about 35 companies show up this morning, and it was, uh, it was really, uh, really exciting. Who pays for the coffee? We pay for the coffee. That's about it. They get themselves <laughs> there. It's and, very capital uh, efficient. <laughs> very capital efficient. And, uh, and we've, we've actually found companies. We've funded companies. We've met through that process before. Um, my background a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm in training wheels also. I've got about three and a half years uh, with First Round. And before that, I was uh, on the operating side in, in a number of startups, uh, a couple of which failed and I learned a lot from, uh, a couple of which that had you know, good exits. Most recently, I was with uh, Delicious, the social bookmarking tagging company. Uh, we were acquired by Yahoo. I ran business development there. And then, and then starting in 1999, I was VP of business development at Half.com, the uh, uh, used books, music, movies marketplace that was acquired by eBay in uh, 2000 and, and spent about six years at eBay in a variety of roles. And um, so I, I, I think the, the entrepreneur perspective is a, is a good one to have. Um, and, and and I think it helps, uh, you know, and that's something that angels very often bring to the table that a lot of, a lot of times traditional venture capital doesn't. And I think we, we believe, we, we exist uh, because we think that to some large degree that the traditional venture capital model is broken. There, there's too much money in it, and at the same time, you know, there's fund economics that just require uh, too much of thinking what's right for the fund rather than what the company needs. And as the, as the prior panelists said, you know, for 50,000 or a couple hundred thousand, you can see if there's something there and if, you know, if a consumer internet play and see if, you know, there's a revenue model. And, um, and, and that's where we play. Our, our average investment size is maybe a little more than that, is about 500,000 to 750,000. Um, and we are, sometimes we go down as low as 100,000, never gone more than a million, and that's our initial uh, investment size. And we're very active. We've, we, we currently have 65 portfolio companies. Um, we've been fortunate to have about eight exits so far. And the most notable was a few weeks ago, it was announced was Mint.com, which got acquired by Intuit for 170 million. Our initial investment was 450,000 out of a $750,000 round, right alongside of some of the most notable angels um, in Silicon Valley. and. Uh, you know, they went on to raise 30 million, and we participated, and and you know, it was it was a, a great exit for everyone involved. But I think, you know, to your question, uh, <clears throat> I don't know the ratio today of angel to uh, to traditional venture capital, so I'm not sure where it'll be in, in in 10 years. But I but I do think that the angel community is terribly important and will be increasingly important, and and uh, and we, you know, we cultivate the relationships that we have with, with our angels. We co-invest um, uh, consciously, and we pass deals back and forth all the time with the folks in our network and, and angels, and they, you know, they, they add value, and I think they will continue to add value. I think one trend we can maybe talk about later is the rise of super angels or professional angel groups, which, which we think are having a bigger and bigger impact, but, but I, I think it's, it's very important and will be increasingly important. Jacques Bernier, Terralist Capital. It seems that there will be no debate today. Uh, and might be, it might be because we come from the same background. I was for 25 years an entrepreneur in Quebec. Uh, five years ago, I moved on the dark side as the head of the largest technology fund in Canada, at the Fonds de Solidarité in Quebec. And this summer, I moved even on the darkest side <laughs> as a fund, a fund manager. Um, so I don't know where I'm sitting now. You look tan. <laughs> uh, as was said priorly, uh, the, the world of technology starts by the angel, starts by the entrepreneur. The, the impact on the economy is not 
created by venture capitalists or investment bankers. They're, it's created by entrepreneurs. We have to, to get them up. And the first people to help them to start are the angels. Uh, so this is increasingly important in the ecosystem that we have today. So even though I'm today uh, sitting on a $700 million fund, a fund uh, that will not invest in, seed, in pure seed uh, funds, the seed part and the angel part is increasingly important for us because it's the base of the whole ecosystem. <laughs> so uh, if, we're here, if I'm here today uh, talking to you, it's mainly because I want to show you that it's, your part is very, very crucial, and specifically in Canada, where the, the dynamic of the whole ecosystem is much more complex than in the States. We're younger, uh, so that we have to work together in trying to create this environment. Someone was asking me earlier in the lobby, knowing my background, why the hell did you want to create Terralis? So I said, well, a year ago or so, I was at a private uh, event with all the large institution uh, investors from Canada in a private meeting. And the discussion starts, and they're all bitching about the VC class at last. No interest, we ne never made money, blah, blah, blah. So put my boxing gloves. After an hour and a half, there's no more boxing gloves. It's bare hand. <laughs> <laughs> and now I make a summary at the end of it. Um, and it wasn't planned. It came out as I'm going to tell you. I said, over the last 10, 15 years in Canada, the number of institutions that invest in venture capital has done this. The allocation of the one remaining has done that. With that money, we might be able to do, if everything aligned, may be able to do 10 funds in Canada over the next four or five years. The entrepreneurs are looking up, they don't see money. The innovation cycle is broken at the university in the R&D center, you know that story. You're bitching that, that last, you have no interest to invest in this last, so what should I do? I should, listening to you, I should lie on my back, put my belly up, and let myself die. Well, I'm so sorry, but I've got a daughter, and there's no way in hell I'm gonna take the chance to raise her in Canada where her future goes through natural resources and Walmarts. Some say here G GM, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> And so I do something. So that's why I decided to create this new fund of fund to be able to move in Canada at least, give us a chance of going through uh, this new crossroad coming up. For your question about the numbers, I would have the same answer uh, that was just given to you because I've got no clue of the real amount, how to compare. I've seen the study that you mentioned about uh, that there's in the States specifically roughly the same amount of money that is being invested by angels than by VCs. What I don't know in those numbers is first in Canada, what are the real, real numbers? And more specifically, we put in, end, in those numbers of angels investment, things that VC are not touching also in terms of sectors. So I don't think that the comparison that that study used is the right one. So I would say the same answer, which is it will be increasingly more important. The size of the venture world will go down so they're catching each other in some ways.